friends, it's Lisa Hetrick, illustrator for Gina K Designs, and I'm so grateful you're joining me today. I'm super excited to be sharing a brand new tutorial using my new Hello Beautiful set with Gina K Designs. And today it is all about watercolor, and we're going to create this super fun jar card using the different stamps from the set. And I'm going to get a little bit geeky and talk about my favorite watercolor supplies and my favorite paints and how watercolor works and how easy it is to use um, in your paper crafting projects. Before I get started on sharing some of the name brands of the products that I use, I just want to share that there are so many watercolor products out there that you can get some amazing results with. You don't have to spend a lot of money to get high-end artist-grade products. I just happen to use a lot of these products in my daily work. Some of my favorite brands are shown here. I like Daniel Smith. It's a really great high quality product. I like Holbein gouache paints and I also like to use Magello's um, artist tube paints. Now this paint box right here is very very well loved and it's full of paint pans from Prima watercolors. Now I really like using Prima's um, pan sets. They're really really high quality, very very vibrant and they're a really great price point for getting started using watercolor. So I highly recommend using them. I use a lot of paint palettes for my different tube watercolors. So this paint palette right here that I'm sharing is from Magello and some of the colors that are in here are from Magello as well. So I've taken my paint tubes and I have put them in this bulletproof glass palette that um, Magello makes, which is a really, really great palette. It's kind of big and clunky, so it really does just kind of stay in my studio space when I'm using it. Here is another great, great starter palette that's made by Sakura. It is um, Koi Watercolors. It's another pan set. It also comes with a water brush, and I'm a huge fan of using water brushes in my paper crafting projects with or without water because they're very convenient to use. This particular pan set from Koi is has a lot of great colors. It also has, it's compact. It has this extra little travel piece for when you're on the go. And the colors are really, really super vibrant and it's very affordable. And I think it's a great, great starter palette. Um, this is one of my higher end palettes. This is a German made watercolor from Schminky and it is one of my favorite palettes. You can see that it is very, very well loved. I use a lot of these colors in some of my professional work and I also use it a lot in my paper crafting projects. You can see that the colors are really, really vibrant. They come in the pans and they make it really easy to use and I'm kind of a little bit of a hot mess with them. But this set is super heavy so it is kind of makes me a little grumpy when I have to carry it with me. But um, it's great for the studio. Now this is one of my favorite sets that sits in the back of my art journals. And this is Peerless Watercolors. Now these are really unique. This particular palette you can download from Jane Davenport. Um, she has a palette uh, template on her website that you can download and set up with your Peerless Watercolors. Now Peerless Watercolors come as a sheet and all of the watercolor paint is dry on the sheet and you activate it with water. And I really like this palette a lot because the colors are really vibrant, super vibrant, and they're perfect for on the go. So let's get started on today's project. I have pulled a piece of watercolor paper, my favorite watercolor paper that I use for paper crafting and card making projects. And I've cut a piece of watercolor right now at four and a quarter by five and a half. And I've also cut a piece of Gina K Designs Black Onyx cardstock. And I'm going to take all of the final pieces of the card and assemble it to a piece of Nina Classic Crest Solar White cardstock to finish off the card. 
I wanted to share a little bit about my favorite watercolor paper for paper crafting projects. And I love this paper from Bee Paper Company. It's readily accessible. It's a really great watercolor paper for paper crafting. And it's just one of my favorites. But you could really use any kind of watercolor paper that you love and that's in your stash. So we're gonna get started with using some ivory black from Magello. And I'm gonna take a little bit of that color and put it down on my craft mat. But first, I want to create the stripe effect that I have in the background piece on this B watercolor paper. So I decided to pop it into my score buddy and do a little score mark at every half inch. And it's really hard for you to see, I'm gonna bring it up to the camera so that you can see the score mark, but it's really kind of hard for you to see. But basically, I've used the score buddy to give myself a, like a little invisible line so that I can go ahead and paint some of the ivory black um, paint from Magello on to the lines. Now, you could do this technique with some masking tape or some purple tape from ThermoWeb, but this was a really quick and easy way for me to get a visual on the, this uh, watercolor paper for me to just go ahead and paint the lines in. And I really like this ivory black from Magello because it's not such a deep, deep, intense, opaque black. It is a black watercolor that is a little is more transparent and it kind of gives me some variegated effects with the black striping. I'm also just using a water brush to apply the paint and going over a few areas that might need a little bit more color. Okay, so now it's time to move on to the flowers and I have stamped out a few flowers using um, Tattered Rose Distress Ink and really I was just looking for a really, really light color to use to stamp out the flowers because I'm kind of doing that no line watercolor technique. Um, and I've uh, taken a little bit of my gouache paint. Gouache paint, this is Opera Pink from Holbein. It is an amazing color. And I'm going to be using some of the other colors, Red Violet and Bright Opera from Magello. So I kind of don't stick with one brand. I kind of mix and match them in my palettes. But I wanna start with some of these pink colors to um, get a base down on the flowers. And I'm basically using the stamped out flowers that I have here as um, just as a guideline for me. I'm not going for perfection here or painting each individual flower. I'll do that in a little bit. Um, but I really wanted to get that first layer of color down so that I kind of have um, a base of color. I let it dry and then I start to go in with the other colors over top. Now it's really important with watercolor that if you want to get layers and layers of color, you need to let your um, layers dry in between. You can let them air dry or you can take your heat tool to them and let them dry in between because it'll allow you the opportunity to layer more color on top and to get like deep rich tones with your color. And you can see here that I am playing with like three flowers and I'm adding layers of color, one layer at a time and varying up how much paint I'm applying when I'm using it. And I'm dipping my brush into the pink and a little bit of the red and I'm kind of mixing colors on the fly to create these different tones of color and I'm just adjusting as I go and really doing it on the fly and doing a little bit at a time, one petal at a time. But that initial layer of pink that I put down on the bottom is like the first layer and that, that allows me to continue to layer on top. That little flower I've got going in the lower left hand corner, I kind of boogered it up and it's kind of sitting there. I may use it for another project. I'm not really sure what I'm going to do with it, but I got a little heavy handed with my color and everything started to bleed together. I'm just going to wait and see what I'm going to do with that one. So I'm adding a little bit more of uh, tones to some of the petals so that we can start to separate 
some of the petals from each other. And some petals will come forward and some petals will go backward and you'll start to see a little bit of dimension in each petal. And I'm just doing that by adding a little bit darker colors, using my reds, um, dipping a little bit into the black to get those tones. Now I wanna move on to the little solid bloom that's in the stamp set. And I, I want this to be watercolory too. So I'm going to experiment a little bit by dipping the stamp into some of the color that I already have in the palette. And I've stamped it down and it's not really giving me the look and feel that I want. It's a little bit blotchy and I can't seem to get the entire color to give me a good impression. Um, with the stamp. So I went ahead and um, decided that I was going to paint the color right onto the stamp. So I just took my water brush and I dipped it into my palette and started to paint and kind of dab the watercolor paint right onto the stamp. And this is a really super easy way to get watercolor effects um, just by dabbing your watercolor paint right onto the stamp and you can see here when I stamp it down it is much more vibrant and it definitely has that watercolor feel look and feel that's going to um, match up really nicely with the other pieces that I've already painted. So I just went ahead and used my uh, Gina K Designs tidy towel and cleaned up the stamp. Now I'm going to move on and paint the jar for the next part of the project. And so I have stamped the jar down in um, a little bit of Distress Ink in a blue. I think I used Stormy Sky and stamped it down because I'm going to be using a lot of the blues that are part of this palette right here from Magello. And I'm mixing up on my palette right now a bit of light blue and a little bit of dark blues because I'm going for more of a denim kind of um, deeper blue color. And I started by turning the jar sideways. And you can see right here, I'm adding a lot of watercolor paint all at once, but in a couple different areas and stroking, using my brush to stroke from the right side of the jar and just moving the, the brush across the jar into the middle. And I've kind of just tidied up a few spots where it's a little bit intense with color. And I'm intentionally not making this look and feel of painting here smooth because I really, really want to get some nice textured effects. So watercolor can be wild and loose and free. And sometimes people get a little bit intimidated by watercolor because it really does fly everywhere, um, depending upon how much water you add to the paint. And here I'm doing a little bit of a combination of adding adding a lot, wa lot of water, as you can see here on the right side, with just a little bit of water over here on the, on the left. Um, and I'm intentionally leaving the strokes that you see in the paint because it's adding a lot of texture. So the thing about watercolor is that you can, the more you layer, add the more color and the depth that you get. And you can see here, I haven't allowed time to dry in between. So I really am working with a lot of water and a little bit of paint to try to create this texture along the way. And I don't want that to be like a smoothie blend, like I would with a Copic marker or another uh, color medium where I'm really blending out these brush strokes. You can see I'm dabbing in a little bit more color over there on the right and just getting a little bit more shadow up in that upper right hand corner um, of the jar. And now right now I'm just going ahead and taking my heat tool and moving the color to get a little bit more texture coming from the side of that jar. And I'm, as a result, I'm getting a lot of blooms of color, which means a lot of color explosions of paint and a lot of water it gives me that blooming kind of effect. Now that I'm finished with all the big watercolor pieces, I'm gonna go ahead and just take my scissors and fussy cut them out so that they become the embellishments that I'm going to use to assemble the card. So right now I'm gonna move ahead and start to create the other leaf layering elements. And right here I have 
four um, die cuts using the free digital die cut download that I have available um, on my website that's a companion to the new Hello Beautiful stamp set. Now, you don't have to use the die cuts. Um, you can easily fussy cut these out, but I have made these available to you and they're free on my website. So I'm going to go ahead and ink up my um, ink up the stamps using two different color greens and I have a memento green and I also have Gina K designs um, grass green so I'm starting with the light color um, in the memento ink and I'm going to go ahead and stamp that down onto the digital die cuts and then I'm going to go ahead and do the layering portion over top of those pieces in the darker color in the grass green so that we can get those two dimensions of the leaf. So I've intentionally designed the stamp set so that you have the outer portion of the leaf and you have some of the detail and texture and dimension of the inner portion of the leaf to just give your project a little bit more, um, again, texture and dimension. And this is perfect for two-step stamping. And it is just so fun to create um, something so super simple with just two colors, a light color and a darker color. So I'm just gonna go ahead and finish up these leaves so that I can move on to uh, creating the next portion of the project. And I'm using this stamp that is just kind of leaves and twigs. Um, on a piece of scrap watercolor paper and I stamped it down with the grass green and didn't really like the way it looked at first so I went ahead and inked it up with the stamp uh, the grass green again and then um, hit it with a little bit of water and you can see here when I stamped it down I'm getting more of that watercolor effect that will blend really really nicely with everything else that I've already created so I went ahead and fussy cut all of that um, that piece out and now we've got all of the elements um, and I'm ready to put the card together. So when I cut that piece of watercolor paper in the beginning, I knew that it was just going to be a little bit too big, about an eighth of an inch too big, because the black onyx cardstock is measured at four and a quarter by five and a half. So I just trimmed down this, um, this watercolor piece of paper a little bit and um, I'll save those little strips for another project because they'll be kind of fun to use as a pattern paper. So I'm going ahead here and just adhering all of the pieces of the watercolor embellishments down onto the card and kind of nesting them together. I'm gonna go ahead and add the sentiment hello to the inside of the jar on the front of this project. And I'm using some Gina K Designs black ink, um, premium dye ink, to, to go ahead and stamp this in. And one of the things I wanted to share is that all of the sentiments are intentionally designed to proportionally fit inside the jar. So they fit from the left to the right of the jar. Of course, you could use the sentiments outside of the jar and in other parts of the card, but I did want to point out that I intentionally designed those sentiments to fit inside the jar. Now, I just took a little bit of Nuvo drops and I'm dropping them down into the center portions of the flower um, just to add a little bit of texture to the inside of the card. I like these Nuvo drops because they're kind of like paint. They're kind of like paint, but they give you some nice texture and dimension, but really low profile. So if you're going to put your card in an envelope and mail it, it it's perfect. And I wanted to go ahead and add, just take it another step further and add a little bit more shimmer and shine to some of the petals on the this project just to give it a little bit more oomph and kind of push a little bit of that watercolor around too. So I'm taking this, um, this brush pen, this glitter brush pen from Nuvo and just adding a little bit of striping of glitter um, across the jar and a little bit on the petals and I'm going to go ahead and take that brush too and kind of dip it into the center portion where those Nouveau drops are and push some of that Nouveau drop paint out a little bit just to again get a little bit more texture and dimension 
in the center of the flower. Also, just to add a little bit more shimmer and dimension and texture to finish the card off. I hope you enjoyed today's watercolor tutorial and it inspires you to get out your watercolors and start using them in your card making and paper crafting projects. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.